we move on to the area of clients. Um, do, do you find that clients ask um, for particular uh, things to be measured um, uh, in order for you to be able to get onto tender lists? Um, mm. And do they ask you to do, say, some of the work for them in order to fulfil their CSR agenda? The short answer is it depends. Um, it, it depends on who the client is. I mean, BAM do a lot of work for the public sector. Um, so the public, our public sector clients, particularly where we're working on framework projects, so where we're, we have a long-term partnership with those clients for a number of years, and you know that might be on a, some of our schools' work or where we work with um, um, local health trusts, for example. The, the, some of the questions they're asking us when we're putting in tenders, the, the questions in the past used to be around health and safety, tell us what your policies are. Um, but now increasingly they're saying, well, okay, well, we know you can build and design and um, you can create these buildings to fantastic quality, to a good price. Um, what else can you give us? You know, what else, can, you know, mm. what added value can you value. bring to yes. the pot, really, mm. bring to the table? Mm. You know, so we're increasingly we're being asked about, well, you know, what is our approach to sustainability? You know, we're being asked about, you know, um, how we've achieved BRIAM excellence in some of the buildings we've designed. Um, we're being asked about the skills and education agenda, being asked about pre-employment practices. Um, you know, how can we work with local schools? Is, is there, are there any tensions here in that they, they are, um, the resources, the financial resources mm. not being made available in order to reach the, the higher t uh, requirements? Yeah, I mean, and sometimes it is a real challenge and that depends on where we are involved in the actual development process. I mean, where we're designing and where we're um, developing buildings, we have a property part of our business then obviously we have full control over the kind of um, the level of the quality of the building, um, you know, how energy efficient it is, you know, the kind of materials we, we um, and the costs associated with that. But if we're innovated a design for a particular project, then we're much more limited in terms of what we can achieve for that building. So um, some of our clients, for example, in the further education sector, for example, um, now the Learning and Skills Council has edicted that all new buildings in the further education sector have to be BRIAM excellent, mm -hmm. which is which is a tall order because mm -hmm. BRIAM excellent, excellent was yes. um, was 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 improved this year, so it's actually much more difficult to achieve BRIAM excellent. And there's also a cost implication associated with that. So um, although there are grants out there to support um, development of sustainable buildings within the public sector. So what do you do when you're squeezed in two ways like that, higher standards and less? And well, basically we have to go through a process of value engineering, so we have to look at, um, you know, and sometimes this obviously isn't, you know, the clients aren't happy with that, that we have to look at, the, the client might have a very big wish list to begin with, and we have to be mm. pragmatic and realistic and actually sit down and work out, well, okay, what do each of these different components cost? Um, you know, where can we achieve the BRIAM um, points to, uh, BRIAM credits to achieve the excellent score? Um, and you can actually cost out how much those different th credits will cost. So you, you can do an exercise with the client mm. um, to actually work out what you can and can't achieve within the cost budget. And this goes into your sort of guaranteed price or...? Yeah, I mean, basically, if you depending on how the contract has worked out, um, you know, sometimes we we're, we're saying that yes, we we'll be designing and developing and be building to bring our excellence. So that is what we have to have to produce at the end of the day. So it's, it starts to become a contractual requirement. And what do clients actually uh, want you to measure in order for them to work out whether you are a, a sustainable contractor? Uh, well, I mean, under BRIAM, there's lots of different kind of criteria. So th there are cr criteria around energy, there will be criteria, criteria around responsible sourcing, there will be criteria around the construction element. Um, within the new BRIAM, they're introducing credits around um, the EPC rating of a building. So there's lots and lots of different kind of components, you know, transport, travel planning, um, so that all different issues which, which make up so Briam's a very strong so sort of very central strong point. Sort of UK, yes. Very yes. Um, yes. Mm. You know, it's the main, if you like, tool that's being used in the UK at the moment to look at 
and define what is a sustainable building. And with Section 106, um, the, the yeah. clients are sometimes expected to do a lot of work for the local authority. Yes. Um, how, how do you deal with that sort of thing? Um, well, I, I suppose that the Section 106 requirements are on the developer, but the, the developer needs to work with the contractor. So when we're working with the, contract, with, with the client, then some of those requirements can only be achieved by working with us and by us working with our supply chain. And how do you do that? Um, <laughs> it's a developing it's a developing issue for us. I mean, we haven't seen that. You know, there are on some 106 requirements. You see that there's them as more as aspirations, but you know, there haven't been hard and fast. You will meet X number, or you're off the job. You know, those kind of requirements haven't come in. But we basically have to demonstrate that that we are actively trying to. So there are dilemmas and challenges there that, um, that we are faced with on a day-to-day -day basis and that we have to engage with and discuss with our different stakeholders. So you tend to have more dialogue with clients and, uh, because of the expectations mm. that they have? Yeah, and it, and it does depend on the client, yes. obviously, and um, you know what we are designing and building. I mean, yes, public sector, um, particularly on the long uh, the, the framework projects where we're working with clients for three, four, five, ten, and in some cases, you know, um, 20, 25, 30 years where we're managing um, under a PFI um, contract, we're managing those buildings um, for the long term, then, you know, our relationship is going to be slightly different. Basically. Because this gives you the opportunity to actually design in sort of uh, energy efficiency um, and various other aspects of sustainability. Yeah. Uh, potentially. Um, you know, because over the long term, because because there becomes more of an incentive, because yeah. um, you know, for example, our facility managers management business um, manages about twenty four different projects um, and contracts across the country, and we're working a lot with schools, and we've done a lot of work on energy monitoring within those um, facilities. So some of those buildings might have been signed ten years ago, for example. So they they may not be. You know, at the forefront, into leading edge in terms of um, design efficiency, in terms of energy efficiency. Sort of sharpens the concentration if the client is is using you to pay their fuel bill. Well, that's right. You know, so it you know so it's in you know we're working in partnership with the client, and it's in both parties' interest to actually reduce the overall energy costs, and we believe that that's the right thing to do anyway.